<laughs> Hi, I'm Kim, and I'm a visual designer at Google. Hey, everyone. I'm Jack. I'm a software engineer at Google. Welcome to designing and building clocks displays with Flutter. Flutter is not only great for building apps, it's also perfect for creating UIs for any surface. So we have uh, a few topics that we want to cover today. Uh, first, Kim is going to take us through uh, some of the considerations that she makes when she's designing a clock. Uh, next, we're going to go over a few of the clocks that we've actually implemented uh, for our smart display products. Uh, and finally, we are going to be jumping over to the laptop and uh, actually building a clock on stage. <laughs> to understand why we chose clocks, first we'll need to describe smart displays. Smart, smart displays are stationary always-on devices with integrated speaker and touch screens. These always-on devices can be placed in communal spaces like the kitchen or living room or private spaces like bedrooms. One of the most useful features of an always-on device is being able to know the time. When these devices are sitting idle, we have the opportunity to show a clock. You may, ha you may have seen some of our clock designs on smart displays, such as the Google Nest Hub and the Lenovo Smart Clock. Before we began designing clocks for smart displays, we wanted to be thoughtful where these smart displays were placed. The, the designs needed to fit the context of the environment. In communal spaces, such as living rooms and kitchens, the clock could be, should be bold enough to be clearly read at a glance from across the room. In private spaces, such as bedrooms and bathrooms, that context shifts. We needed to be sensitive to how light and motion are used. Fast animation and bright colors could be distracting in a space where relaxation is important. Because these smart displays are in your home, we wanted the clocks to complement their unique surroundings. So we needed to create a wide range of styles that could blend in multiple environments. From these considerations, we explored a few themes. Google has always been known as a playful brand, with the colorful logo and the iconic doodles on their search page. How can we bring that playfulness to clocks? We studied and experimented with color, transparency, and motion to inject a sense of play. In our playground clock, the colorful minutes and hours layer on top of each other as time passes. We could have had the numbers immediately replace each other, but by offsetting the timing of the outgoing minute and layering the numbers with color complementary colors, we added a moment of delight. The colors are reminiscent of the Google logo, but with an expanded palette. Material design is Google's visual language inspired by the physical world and its textures, including how they reflect light and cast shadows. In the second theme, materiality, we explored using light, shadow, and texture to give depth to the hour, minute, and second hand of a traditional clock face. In our clock, Timeless, we used tonal colors in transparency, and we explored how light passes through each layer and creates depth. In inspired by traditional clocks, we incorporated subtle motion in the second hand. In Timeless, like many of our clock faces on the, on the Lenovo Smart Clock, has multiple color choices to fit its surroundings. The clocks also have a light and dark palette, so they can dynamically switch based on the lighting conditions of the room. For our final theme, numeric, we raised the question, how can we tell time with a digital display using bold, easily recognizable characters, and how could we utilize motion to emphasize those characters? In the Eclipse clock, the numbers are larger than their columns, but instantly recognizable at a glance. Instead of replacing each digit as the time changes, we saw an opportunity to use time and relate that to the vertical position of each number. The numbers incrementally move up over the course of an hour, minute, or second until pushed out of view by the following number. These are some of the clocks that launched with the Lenovo Smart Clock and may roll out to smart displays when the system UI will be built with Flutter. 
Now that I've shared how we design clocks for smart displays, we can start building a clock in Flutter. For this talk, I went back to two of the themes, numeric and playful, and did a few more designs. These are a bit more expressive than what you'll find in smart displays, because our goals are different. For these clocks, I wanted to showcase the possibilities of Flutter. For a numeric, I explored how the changing minute can draw itself in and out of the clock. Each number could have had a custom animation. I even used Rive, formerly known as Flare, to create the number two animation. Each vector line is drawn in. The keyframes are staggered to create this waterfall effect. In Adobe After Effects, this is called Trim Path. In Rive, I use keyframes and change the start and end points. With the playful theme, it reminded me of overprinting, a characteristic of printed material where the multiple colors overlap and blend together. This inspired me to explore mixing typefaces and adding texture to simulate the woodblock or letterpress printing style. I call this clock impression. Welcome. That one looks pretty cool. Why don't we build the one on the left? Let's do it. This clock has a background color. The minute is layered on top of the hour to give it the overprinting effect. I also have a texture on top of everything, and I worked with a motion designer to animate the minutes in and out of the clock. Let's get started. Awesome. So as we move over to the laptop, let's take a look at our starting project. So the first thing that we want to call out is uh, Flutter's flexibility. So I am currently running on Android Studio, uh, and I'm using an Android emulator. But it's really easy to, to run the project using whatever IDE you want to use. Um, or even change up the device type. You can run it in an iOS simulator, in a Chrome tab. Um, it's it's kind of whatever you want. Uh, so the next thing we want to look at is everything in Flutter is a widget. Um, so our initial app widget uh, is pretty simple here. We have some basic scaffolding. Uh, and we have a black background here. And we have our clock uh, centered. So the last thing that we want to talk about is the time provider. Um, this is actually it's just a, a, a little notifier that's notifying our clock every time that the time is updated. Um, and for our, for our purposes, uh, we've sped it up to about one minute every three seconds. So as we look into our clock here, um, it's also a pretty simple widget. Um, the, the, the biggest piece here is the build function. Um, we basically just have a white background with some uh, text centered. Uh, and every time that we set the state here, uh, it rebuilds. So uh, why don't we take a closer look at the clock that we want to create? I think the easiest thing to start with is probably just updating the background. Yeah, why don't we do that? So I'm going to jump over here. And the first thing we're going to do is create our background color uh, as a variable um, using a hex value that Kim has given us. We're going to take the background color, stick it in our container, and our background color should update. <laughs> it's looking pretty good, Kim. It's kind it, of telling me everything I need to know. It's definitely a clock, but I'm wondering if you could update the hour minutes to the hour textiles to match my design. Cool, let's do it. So we're going to create a couple of text styles, which is super easy in Flutter. Um, it's, it's, it's really simple to provide attributes like a color, a font family, or just change up the size. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to come down to our text widget here. We're going to add our hour text. And we're going to apply our hour text style to it. Nice. How about that? Looks pretty good. Can we add our minutes as well? They're layered on top of the hours. Yeah. So in order to do this, uh, we're going to use a stack widget. Um, the stack widget in Flutter is pretty simple. It just lays out all of its children on top of one another. So we're going to recreate our text box, one for the hour and one for the minute. We'll update them with the appropriate content. And we'll give them each their text style. 
from there, we're looking pretty good. Nice. That was fast. Yeah, so Flutter's hot reload is uh, really easy to iterate on our designs um, and, and move quickly. I'm wondering if we can actually change the numerals into words for the minutes. Awesome. So one, one of our previous clocks that we saw uh, actually uses a time, fatter, a time formatter to do something like this. So we're just going to pull that one in. We're going to format our text. And that's kind of looking a little bit more like what we were hoping for. Yeah. Looks pretty good. I think I have one more thing, which is the texture that's on top of everything to give that kind of wood printing effect. Yep. So we have our texture image uh, that Kim has provided for us. And we're going to stack that on the very top. And we're going to give it a background color so that it doesn't stand off of the, the clock. We're going to hot reload. And we have our texture. That's cool. Can we take a look at our original design? Let's do it. I actually layered the minute text on the hour using a blend effect called multiply, where it acts as um, it allows light to travel between two layers, and that over the overlapping colors are actually darker. I was wondering if we can implement that. Yeah, let's try to do that. So that effect is actually difficult to achieve using a stack. So what we're going to try and do is use a custom painter. So a custom painter uh, just allows us to have better control over the pixels as they're painted to the screen. And so we have our initial clock painter here. And we are going to add it as the uh, painter for a custom paint. We're going to give it our date time. And then we are going to go in and add our texture asset as the child so that it gets painted on top. Oh, what happened to our work? You're so close. <laughs> well, because we're using the custom painter, we're going to have to actually recreate our text objects. Uh, instead of using the text widgets, we're going to be using text painters. So why don't we build up our hour painter? So we're creating a text painter here. Uh, we're going to use our time formatter to get our hours text. And what we can do is actually just pull down our text styles from above. So we are going to plug in our hour text style to our text painter. And the last thing we need to do is lay out our hour. Um, what that does is, is it, it just sizes it up for the painter so it knows what size to paint it. And then we're going to paint it right in the center. Nice. So. The last thing we have to do here is do the same thing with our minute painter. We're going to go back to our time formatter for our minutes text. And we already have our minutes text style down here. And then the last step is to lay it out and paint it. And we're back to where we started. Great. So how do you implement the multiply? So the multiply effect is kind of fun. We're actually going to save the minutes layer, but this time we're going to apply the blend mode to it. We can then restore it on top of the hours painter after it's been painted, and we're going to get our nice multiply effect. Oh, that's exactly what I was going for. I wonder if we can take a look back at the original design. I worked with a motion designer to give you some curves. So I added physics to, uh, to how the minutes, uh, with the minutes transition in and out of the clock. I'm wondering if we can add that to our Let's clock do it. Phase. So the first thing to think about when doing most animations in Flutter is create an animation controller. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to create our animation controller, and we're going to initialize it. Uh, and it's pretty simple to add things like a duration or an initial value. 
The next thing that we want to do is go down into our custom painter, and we're going to have to actually teach our painter how to paint the offset. So we're going to give it an animation object. Um, and in this case, it's just a double that represents the offset that the minutes text is going to be painted at. And then what we can do is actually let the painter know that uh, when the animation object actually updates its value, we want to repaint. The last thing here is to actually take our offset value and add it to the minute painter as it's painted. You've written a lot of stuff. Oh, do we still have some more to do for the animation? Yeah. So the last thing that we want to do to actually get movement into our animation here is to add our offset tween. Um, and so what that does is it gives us a starting point and an ending point, and it lets us know how we actually want to translate between the two. So we have an entrance animation here, and we apply a curve to it so that it's not just a linear transition. And then we have our exit curve here, which moves from, from 0 to 30 just in, a, in the downward direction. Uh, and we give that one a little, a little curve, too. So what we want to do now is we're going to take our offset tween. We're going to have our animation controller actually drive the animation here. Um, and then the last thing we want to do is kick off the animations every time that our time is updated. So from there, we should be able to see our changes. Oh, that looks great. I'd be OK with shipping that right now. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so uh, we're going to jump back to the slides for a sec. To recap, we've designed and built a clock that could exist in a graphic designer's or print lover's home with the bold hour number as a focal point and the playful animation for the minutes. We, we hope that through this talk, we've demonstrated how quickly Flutter can help bring your creative ideas to any surface. Thanks for coming today and tuning in to see how easy it is to design and build clocks in Flutter. Yeah. So we actually have one more thing to, to talk to you guys about. Just one. Just one. <laughs> uh, if you're feeling inspired and you want to showcase your own clock, uh, Flutter's actually hosting a clock building competition. So if you go to uh, flutter.dev slash clock, you can participate in the Flutter Clock Challenge. There are, some, there are some exciting prizes. One of them is a loaded iMac Pro, and we have also Lenovo smart displays and smart clocks. We look forward to seeing what you guys create. <laughs>